production, Susie Orman for The Young, Fabulous and Broke. Good evening, and welcome to the inaugural edition of Face Off Minnesota, where the top high school teams in our state match their wits in a quiz bowl format. We'll ask questions about history, science, literature, fine arts, even pop culture. And we plan to have some fun while doing it. In tonight's quarterfinal match, Minnetonka squares off against Creighton Durham All. You won't want to miss it. Face Off Minnesota is next. Face Off Minnesota, the high school quiz bowl championship, is brought to you by Minnesota's Taco Bell and Pizza Hut restaurants, supporting youth brain power. More at borderfoods.com. Additional support by Star Tribune. All the news you want on the dot. Welcome to Face Off. Twin Cities Public Television has worked with tonight's sponsors and Minnesota High School Quiz Bowl and National Academic Quiz Tournaments to come up with a challenging format that tests the brain power of top Minnesota students. For the past six months, more than 50 teams from around the state have competed in the qualifying tournaments, going head to head with top schools in the region. We're now down to the Elite Eight, and we're going to quickly get down to business. First, all time Jeopardy champion, Ken Jennings is our host. We're happy to have him, and we'll formally introduce the teams in a minute, but first, let's start playing, Ken. Thank you, Mary. Now, before we meet our teams, we thought we'd dive right into some questions and answers. Here's how our game's going to work. I'm going to be reading two kinds of questions. There are toss-up questions, which I will read aloud to both teams, and they can interrupt whenever they know the answer. The team that answers each toss-up correctly will receive a multi-part bonus, which is worth up to 30 points. Good luck to both teams. I'll begin with the first toss-up. Listen carefully and interrupt me with your buzzer as soon as you know the answer. Lucas Cranach's Adam and Eve, Jan van Eyck's The Arnold Feeney Marriage, Egyptian Hieroglyphics, and Grant Wood's American Gothic are among the works parodied in, for 10 points, the opening credits of what ABC television series about Wisteria Lane and its... Yes, that's Bob Jamison, Creighton Durham All. Desperate Housewives. Desperate Housewives is correct, for 10 points. Your bonus. <laughs> for 10 points each, which physical quantity equals, first, mass per unit volume? Density. Density is correct. Potential difference per unit current. Voltage. Voltage. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not correct. Please wait for me to prompt you on these bonus parts in the first half as well. Finally, applied force per unit area. Captain? Pressure. Pressure is correct. The second one was resistance. You got two out of the three parts correct, so 20 points on your bonus. Next toss-up. Pencil and paper ready. Faisal cuts a circle into an unknown number of congruent sectors, each of which has a central angle of 15 degrees. It's easy to compute the number of sectors made, since the sum of the central angles must be 360 degrees. For 10 points, that is Minnetonka, Eric. 24. 24 sectors is correct. For 10 points, your bonus. This Colombian, this Colombian won the 1982 Nobel Prize in Literature for 10 points each. First, name this author of magic realist novels, such as Love in the Time Gabriel of Colossus. Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Garcia Marquez is correct. Again, please wait for me to prompt on the bonus parts. This Garcia Marquez novel tells of seven generations in the fictional village of Macondo. 100 Years, 100 years of Solitude. Is correct. Finally, this family story forms the main plot of 100 Years of Solitude. Wendia. 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 Wendia is correct. 30 points on your bonus. <laughs> and we'll take a quick break from the action right now to introduce our teams. Up at the top, we have Creighton Durham Hall. Now, they're our, uh, they're our upset team. They were our 13th seed, I believe, going into the tournament. And yet, here they are in the Elite Eight. They are the George Mason University of our tournament. <laughs> Except probably shorter and with larger comic book collections. <laughs> now, we've already, seen that our, we've already seen that these contestants are very bright. So we're going to uh, ask them about their shortcomings. Because when I was a teenager, that's what I love people to do. We're going to uh, introduce them from right to left. And we're going to ask Creighton Durham to tell us the worst grade they've received in their entire scholastic career. Kindergarten through 12th grade. We'll start over here on the right with Sam Caldas. Hi, I'm Sam Caldas. Uh, worst grade ever was uh, fourth grade math, and I would rather not disclose what I got. Is it fractions? Fractions? It was everything. <laughs> <laughs> you can go ahead and ring your buzzers as well when you uh, introduce yourselves. That's, we'll do a buzzer check as well. Mike Johnson. 
Uh, worst grade's got to be an A minus in AP Biology. Your worst grade's an A minus, Mike, in your entire school career. That's correct. That's got to be rough. Yeah. And I guess that's why you're the captain. <laughs> CJ Rydberg. Um, my worst grade would have to be failing at basic, basically every music class in grade school. <laughs> you don't carry a tune for us? No, not at all. I'd like you to go ahead and sing the entire BG song of your choice for us right now. <laughs> your, your, te your teammates can do the harmonies. <laughs> I think the audience would probably fall over dead. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Bob Jamison. Uh, I'd have to say an 18 out of 35 on my chapter 8 math test this year. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you still remember. Oh, yeah. 18 out of 35, it still haunts me. Okay. I still wake up at nights, the choppers. That doesn't sound so bad. It's just over 50%. Well, good luck to Creighton Durham Hall. On the bottom tier, we have Minnetonka High School. We're going to ask them to tell us the worst wrong answer they have ever given in a quiz ball competition of any kind. We'll start over here on the right with Sean Litzy. Hi. Um, my worst wrong answer I've actually given three separate times, and that would be James Adams instead of John Adams. <laughs> you just kept trying just in case it became right. Yeah. Posthumously. Oh, well. <laughs> Eric Adams, our captain. I'm Eric Adams, and the worst thing I've actually ever done in Quiz Bowl is saying the headwaters of the Mississippi were in New York. <laughs> <laughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong, but they are, in fact, in the, very, the fine state of Minnesota. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Peter Ladner. All right, my wrong answers are too numerous to count, so picking one would be impossible. So you think we might see a new winner today? Oh, possibly. Oh, okay, stay tuned. <laughs> Finally, Drew Stanecki. Uh, my worst answer definitely would be when I tried to convince a moderator that rivers can flow upstream. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out they uh, don't? Not, not true at all. Who knew? He meant north. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, good luck to both teams. It's nice to meet both of you. I think we have some information right now from Mary LaHammer. Thanks, Ken. The questions being used in our tournament were prepared by National Academic Quiz Tournaments. Now, in case of a disputed answer, we have three judges with us tonight. Quiz guru Eric Hilleman coaches the academic quiz team at Carleton College. Emily Pike, frequent moderator at high school quiz tournaments around the upper Midwest. And we welcome Brian Weichel, former Jeopardy! champion. In fact, he held the single score record that... Ken broke. Uh-oh. <laughs> She's a veteran quiz bowl organi organizer and moderated. Now fully empowered in their decision-making capacity. All judges' decisions are final. Ken, ready for more questions? We'll dive right back in. I think I want to correct something I said at the beginning. You are allowed to, you don't have to wait for me to prompt you on a bonus. Just don't interrupt me in the middle of, of talking in the first half of our tournament. Uh, obviously, I've never been on a televised game show before. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> We'll begin with the next toss-up for both teams. Buzz in as soon as you know the answer. The Washington Post reported in November 2005 that this organization had black sites like Bagram Air Base. Uh, Creighton Durham, Bob Jamison. CIA? The CIA is correct for power. That's 15 points. You answered early enough to receive 15 points on that question about CIA interrogation. Your bonus for 10 points each. Answer the following about events of the year 1521. In March, this man's expedition landed in the Philippines. He was killed in April, but his expedition continued circumnavigating the, glo the globe without him. Ferdinand Magellan. Is correct. In April, this man was called before the Imperial Diet in Worms, where he offered to renounce any of his teachings that could be shown contrary to scripture. Martin Luther. It is indeed Martin Luther. In August, Spanish soldiers conquered this Aztec capital city and set it ablaze. Tenochtitlan. Tenochtitlan is correct. 30 points on your bonus. Very nice. <laughs> Next toss-up. The cover of this singer's 2005 album shows her in a purple outfit with flaming red hair. Hung Up is the first single from that album, Confessions on a Dance Floor. It's, that is Drew Stanecki of Minnetonka. Madonna. Madonna. Luisa Veronica Ciccone is correct for 10 points. Your bonus. I'm instructed to prompt on Esther, her Kabbalah name. For 10 points each, what is the only nation to share a land border with, first, Portugal? Spain. Spain. Is correct. Denmark. Germany. Germany. And Qatar. Uh, Saudi, Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Is correct. 30 points on your bonus. Next toss-up. The Roman historian Tacitus, in his, in his Germania, associated this god with Mercury because he led the souls slain in battle. In that role, he was assist assisted by the Valkyries in bringing the dead to Valhalla. For 10 points, name this god of wisdom, the leader of the Norse pan... That is Sam of Creighton Durham. Odin. Odin is correct for 10 points. Your bonus. For 10 points each, answer these questions about Johann Strauss the Younger. Strauss is best known today for what dances played in 3-4 time? Waltzes. 
Walt. Yeah, that sounds good. Walt is correct. Strauss's most famous waltz is named for this beautiful blue river that flows through Vienna. Danube. Yeah. Danube is correct. Strauss also wrote this op operetta in which Eisenstein, who is jailed after a party at Count Orlovsky's home, makes a friend walk home from another party dressed as a bat. Captain? Friar Tuck. <laughs> no, it's the Fleeter Mouse as seen in Batman Begins. You got 20 points on the bonus. That moves you into the lead with 105 points over Minnetonka's 80. Next toss up. Tuolumne Meadows is the northern part of this park where the Merced River Valley features Bridal Veil Fall, El Capitan, and Half Dome. For 10 points each. That is Bob of Cretan Durham. Yosemite? Yosemite is correct for 10 points. Your bonus. Don't choke on this bonus for 10 points each. This structure, sometimes called the windpipe, links the pharynx to the rest of the respiratory system. Esophagus. Yeah. Esophagus. No, I'm sorry, that's your trachea. This structure that lies behind the trachea moves food with peristaltic waves after it is swallowed. Yeah. Esophagus. Esophagus? Yeah, just keep saying esophagus till it's right. That's correct. <laughs> While swallowing, this structure covers the opening to the trachea and prevents food from, quote, going down the wrong pipe. The epiglottis. Defer to Bob. The epiglottis? Is correct, Bob. 20 points on your bonus. Next toss-up. They are usually extracted from kimberlite or lamproite deposits in volcanic pipes. Synthetic ones can have hexagonal symmetry, but almost all natural ones have a tetrahed tetrahedral arrangement of carbon atoms. For 10 points, name these gemstones at the top of the Mohs scale of... That is Sean of Minnetonka. Diamonds. Is correct for 10 points. Your bonus. He, he died in Germany. He died in Germany in 1900, just seven years after writing his first book, Maggie, A Girl of the Streets, for 10 points each. First, name this pioneer of American realism. Dreiser. What? Dreiser. Dreiser? It's Stephen Crane, actually. Oh, okay. Henry Fleming is the protagonist of this Stephen Crane novel of the Civil War. The Red Badge War. of Courage. The Red Badge of Courage. Is correct. In this Crane short story, four survivors of a shipwreck try to reach the Open Florida boat. coast. Open boat. Open boat. Open boat. Is correct for 20 points. Your bonus, your next toss up, excuse me. After this woman's husband, Peter III, intervened in a war between Denmark and Holstein, her lover, Grigory Orlov, deposed him. That is Bob of Creighton Durham. Catherine the Great. Is correct for 15 points. <laughs> for 10 points each, in which U.S. mountain range would one find, first, the Cumberland Gap? Oh, Appalachians. Appalachians. Is correct. Second, the Donner Pass. Oh, Rockies. 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 Yeah. So. Rockies? It's the Sierra Nevada, I'm sorry. Makes me sort of hungry just thinking about it. Finally, <laughs> Lolo Pass, which was crossed by Lewis and Clark in 1805. Rockies. 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 Uh, I need you to be more specific. Rocky. Great Rocky Mountain. Captain? Cascades. It's the Bitterroot Range of the Rockies. So uh, 10 points on your bonus. Toss up. In 1900, it had 37 letters, but four were dropped by a 1918 spelling reform. It retains a letter pronounced U that resembles a linked I and O, and that is Sean of Minnetonka. The Cyrillic alphabet? Cyrillic or Russian is correct. Uh, 15 points on your bonus. It results from removing taxes and adding transfer payments to a person's wages. For 10 points each, name this economic quantity, the money a person can spend as he or she wishes. Disposable income? Yeah. Disposable income? Is correct. This is whatever remains of disposable income after the basic costs of living have been removed. In short, it's money to be spent on wants rather than needs. Captain? Luxury income? It's discretionary income. We also would have accepted Jeopardy winnings. Finally, <laughs> people with no discretionary income are said to live below this line, which was $19,307 for a family of four in 2005. The poverty line. It's correct for 20 points on your bonus. Next toss up. This character saves the narrator after he is shot through the spleen. Despite having been belted and flayed by the British soldiers, he served as a regimental beastie. For 10 points, name this Indian water bearer. Who is, that is Sam of Cretan Durham. Gunga Din. Gunga Din is correct for 10 points. <laughs> Widening a razor thin lead over Minnetonka. Your bonus for 10 points each. Which British monarch first is currently reigning? Elizabeth II. Queen Elizabeth II. Queen Elizabeth II. Is correct. Second, was killed at Bosworth Field, bringing the Plantagenet dynasty to a close. Richard the Third. Richard the Third. Richard the Third. Richard the Third. Is correct. Finally, was the nemesis of Robin Hood. King John. King John. King John. Is correct. Thirty points on your bonus.
and a 55 lead over Minnet 55 point lead over Minnetonka. Next toss up. One of these 14 species, the large cactus ground, is found on Espanola, while the vegetarian is on San Cristobal and the mangrove is on Isabella. They are named for an Ecuadorian archipelago and a British biologist whom they inspired. For 10 points, name these finches. That is Peter of Minnetonka. Darwin finches. Darwin finches is correct. Your bonus. They are two lines separated by a constant distance d for 10 points each. First, what term describes such lines in a plane that do not intersect? Yeah. Well, parallel. Parallel is correct. One form of this Greek mathematician's parallel postulate is that given a line L and a point P not on that line, there exists exactly one line through P that is parallel to L. Euclid. Euclid's correct. Fin finally, in higher dimensions, this term describes lines that do not intersect but yet are not parallel. Skew. Yeah. Skew. Skew is correct. 30 points on your bonus. Toss up. Oh, it sounds like that is the end of time for our round. That appalling submarine noise means we either have five seconds to live or we're at halftime. <laughs> the score at the half, this is a close, close game. Could hardly be any closer. Creighton Durham Hall leads by only 15 points, 200 to Minnetonka's 185. Congratulations to both teams. Uh, halftime means you get a few minutes to...